Let's talk about making friends. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I'm drinking H2O because your girl is behind today, which you know is kind of crazy for me. I'm very good at drinking water, so... Okay, in today's video, I want to discuss friendship. It's like one of the most commonly discussed topics. We're always talking about it in our little bubble on the internet. You see it um, displayed in front of you when you watch YouTubers become panelists, become friends, show up on each other's streams. You see it in your own life, whether you're making coworker friends, church friends, relationship friends, friends you do stuff with, friends you are friendly with because they're just there. Like maybe they're your neighbors or literally, you know, just in your places uh, where you socialize or maybe you're becoming friends with someone because the literal consciousness that is them is so profoundly interesting and inviting and so syncs up with you that how could you not be friends? No matter how you're seeking out friendship, it's so specifically defined by your bubble that you have to first acknowledge what bubble you're in and then how you share or don't share reality with that friend, right? My allergies are also so bad today. I, whew, there's a lot going on in my face. Okay. So as you guys know, I have a friendship, uh, hierarchy that I operate under. This heavily motivated by years ago watching Abba and Preach discuss how they're not really friends. And again, friendship is defined very specifically for everyone. Papa, you're my very best friend. And you're mine too, Todd. And we'll always be friends forever, won't we? Yeah, forever. Well, let's talk about friendships for a minute. Here's how you know if someone's your friend. A. You can tell them bad news and they'll listen. And they won't tell you why, you know, you're stupid and, and why that bad thing happened to you and how something worse happened to them once and, you know, derail the whole conversation. You can actually tell them bad news and they'll listen. You got to surround yourself with people who want the best for the best part of you. You can hang around with weasels and losers that are trying to pull you down to justify the fact that they're spiraling downhill as well. And you know, the upside of that is you don't have to have any responsibility and you can all whine about how wretched life is, you know, so that's pretty attractive. We're sometimes not too sure how we get into good friendships. It seems to happen rather mysteriously. We talk of somewhat randomly clicking with people. Trying to plan for this sounds like cheating. But there is something at the heart of many friendships that seems important to identify and in a way to get good at. Vulnerability. It's too easy to assume that what makes us likeable are our strengths, our accomplishments, the things we're proud of. Certainly this impresses, but it isn't what draws others to us. Some people feel like if you don't get invited to someone's wedding, were you ever friends? Some people feel like, uh, you know, not all friends need to be at weddings, right? So depending on how you define friendship, you'll have an expectation and an obligation in relationship to that word. So in my life, I have my inner circle, my inner outer circle, and basically everyone else. So I have the people that are like my ride or die. They can know everything about me. If they asked me a question, I would tell them um, with boundaries, of course. The inner outer circle are people that I call friends, people that I am okay establishing a sort of awareness of their consciousness in the universe, and I'm open to giving them a certain amount of time over strangers. But it's not always clear cut. And sometimes my language is very, very confusing for people. Look, I am somebody who has been called privileged because I have friends. And I'm also someone who's been called sort of uh, <laughs> spectrum -y because of the way I negotiate friendship. So depending on what you want, need, desire, that is going to change how you interact with these friendships. friendships okay? In anime, which is my favorite, as you know, friendship is a consistent theme. Sometimes you will see people like Goku reach Super Saiyan not because Chi Chi, his wife, got hurt. Nah, because his best homie got slaughtered by Frieza. You feel? So it's not simply that friendship is a thing you do with someone on Saturdays. Sometimes friendship is a relationship you have with someone that is so intimate, you will reach your next level of power because of something that you that you either did with your friend or saw happen to your friend or in relationship to your friend. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. Come on! Now, even though Goku, great example of a friend, someone who can always be there for his friends, he's also not someone who can always be there for his friends. See, Goku comes in to save the day. He doesn't come in to chill with you on a Saturday, right? Now, 
In Super, obviously, there's a different form of Goku, a Goku that is more present in his children's lives and the lives of his spouse and friends. But generally speaking, even within Super, there's sort of conversations that happen between Vegeta and Goku about obligation to family and friends over fighting to save the universe. But of course, ultimately, you got to fight to save the universe because your friends are in that universe. When I say you have to have an understanding of reality or relationship with your friends, I mean quite literally when I was growing up, my best friend of 20 billion years, she and I, she grew up the Democrat, I grew up the Republican, and all through our nine years old till now in our 30s, we have always been either on opposite ends or sort of in variations of similar. So I went from being a Republican, she went from being a Democrat liberal to being a liberal, less so a Democrat, but never progressive, and I went into progressivism. So she is somebody who, though understands feminism, never really joined feminist groups, never learned feminist literature, never, 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 versus I went from conservative to going straight into like feminist literature and progressive ideology. And then now she and I have probably both moved back a little bit into more liberal circles, though I am still more progressive than her. So there's something to be said about how you have friendship. So our friendship, I think, was so strong and is so strong because even though we've had these different relationships with reality, we've always seen the literal consciousness of each other. This girl, this woman is so important to me. She is absolutely my best friend. And I know I have many, but I don't. I actually have only three like besties that I have plucked from the universe and been like, please be my best friend. And then everyone else is family. So everyone in my inner circle is family except for three people. And then of course my ultimate best friend, which is my partner. So my partner and I are obviously ultimate besties. But again, that should be expected from my friends because I'm a romantic. Everyone knows when I get married, I become like, this is my human, this is my best friend. And so for me, when I think about friendship, it was a requirement of this relationship that he and I also established a friendship. And I, it's not that we started off as friends because we didn't have much time before we moved right into intimacy, considering our compatibility and our attraction to each other. But I like him so much. I like him, like as a person. I like him. I like talking to him. I like hearing his insights. I like hearing his thoughts. You guys have actually gotten the chance to meet one of my other best friends, Q, who's been on this channel and on these podcasts. And he is also someone that's inner circle, my best friend. I love, I like him as a person. I love him as a person, as a consciousness. He's someone I can talk to. He's someone that I can reach out to for anything. And so those friendships happened because of the way we ended up meeting as much as it was who we were. So Q and I met because he started off as a caller and interested in my content and ideas. And then we formed a really authentic relationship outside of that. He's met my family. He's come to town. He knows every, he knows things about me that the internet will never know. My bestie, who we met at nine years old, we met because we moved into the same neighborhood together. So I moved next door to her. And then we became friends as, as children. My other bestie that I don't really talk to about too often um, of 12 years, she is an engineer in another state and does her thing really Really cool career, really cool friendship. Started off, um, she was in my first adult group out of high school. So in high school, I had a, a friend group that I was kicked out of um, for a lie that was told about me. Then I ended up in a 20s a group of libertarians, conservatives, and sort of future progressives. And we all became friends. And then she and I from that friend group kind of tore off and stayed besties. So everyone in my life, we met because we also had things to share. Notice how all three of my besties are all political. Not politically activist necessarily, but all politically minded. My best friend who is nine years old, we bonded on politics. My friend in my first adult group, we bonded on politics. Q and I bonded over ideas and politics and philosophy. So even though we all have different variations of agree to disagree, we all have this thing that really matters to us. It's not politics particularly, but it's the idea of exploring what does it mean to be human. So for us, when I say we have a shared reality, we have a shared interest and why humans do what they do. And that really bonds us. It makes it so we never run out of conversation. It makes it so I always have questions to ask them. They always have questions to ask me. And even if we have moments of disagreement and tension, which happens because we are all different, we would all do things a little differently. It only adds to the intimacy of the friendship. Okay. When I think about my casual friends. So outside of inner circle, I think about my homies that I, you know, love to catch up with, love to do things with, love to hang out with, but I don't make, I cannot make them a priority at 2 a.m., right? So when you think about your friendships, you're really thinking about 
what obligation am I asking this person to make towards me? Now, not everyone in your inner circle, family, not everyone will be in agreement with how things should go, which is why when you put down boundaries, it has to be about you. I'm open, but I have boundaries. I love my friends, but you do not have a say in how I spend my money, what career I choose, who I marry. Like I love my friends, but I'm not doing life with you. I'm doing life with my partner. I'm doing life with myself. And you are part of that life journey, but you are like a side quest or a, a, a B-roll part of the, the, the film. You, you feel me? Like it's not to say that they're less important. It's to say they have to take less priority because eventually they will also be partnered or they will go on to live their own lives. I had a person in Seattle I talk about often. Wonderful person. Great person. Wonderful friendship. I loved that friendship for how long it lasted. I bet if I reached out to him now, he would probably receive my text messages positively. We just haven't spoken in many years. But we had this great friendship, and I really felt like I could tell him a lot. But I never felt like he was meant to be inner circle, right? But I didn't think that was a bad thing. But one of the things he said to me, and we differed on a little bit too much, is that he did feel like he was doing life with his friends. Now, I don't know if that's changed for him, but that always made me realize, like, there are people out there who do life with their friends, like there was a lady in town locally, I'm sure you've heard the story before, where she moved out here to start a farm with her bestie, but her bestie decided she wanted to live in Idaho. So who is, you know what I mean? Like your friends are individuals who can do life with you. People do that. But if you're not the person to do that, don't make the commitment. So I know I'm not the person to do that. I cannot make a commitment to my friends that says, I will be with you if you move state. I don't even do that with my siblings, and I love my siblings. My inner circle, we're spread out. There's nobody in this state that is inner circle except Mark, my brother, and him and I are about to split off because I'm going to Europe. So again, when we look at our life and why we do things, why we make friendships, it has to be for the reasons that you are at least aware of. So some people are just lonely, and they want someone to hang out with on a Saturday night. Great. Get a friend. Uh, that you do bowling with, that you do magic with, that you do video games with, get a friend that you pay because they're a sex worker and you, you know what I mean? There are so many ways to just do something with someone. But again, on a spectrum, on a hierarchy, you're going to have to decide about which friendship you want to have more investment in and who do you want your 2 a.m. calls to be? Who do you call when you're in a hospital? Like my bestie, who's the engineer, she and I were in the same state at the time, and I was in the hospital for migraines. I was hospitalized, and she was my emergency call, and I was her emergency call, and I could trust her in that. Not everybody has that at all times, and if you're lucky, you have a cool roommate that will do it for you, but she and I did it because we're like sisters. So it didn't feel like my friends were putting a burden on me um, that I couldn't handle or didn't want to handle, but if I had a friend who wasn't in a circle who was like, Brittany, can you be my emergency call? I'd be like, no, no, I'm not signing up for this. I I can't consent to this. I have too many people that I, I need to give my time to. I think sometimes in life, you start a friendship that happens naturally, and there's like a feeling of obligation that wants to occur. In uh, Hunter Hunter, as an example, there is a moment in time in, sh in which one of the characters wants to have a closer relationship with Gon, but Gon can't offer her that because Gon has a responsibility that he has to fulfill which means he cannot give her priority. And it's so important that you know yourself that well, as well as gone, to know your motivations and to know why you're doing what you're doing. So when good, awesome, amazing people come into your life, you can let them down in a way that makes sense, but also in a way that doesn't compromise your goals. I'm open, but I have boundaries, right? The reason I'm so pro, pro, pro negotiation is just that it allows you to have that conversation. Sometimes in life, it can get so overwhelming that your friends and family are deeply impacted and still feel helpless and, and don't know what to do. So you have to offer direction based off of your boundaries. So let's say um, let's say you break a leg and you can't walk anymore and uh, you're out for six months and you need to ask a friend to help you. Which friend do you ask? If you don't have any, you have to earn the kind of money to hire a nurse. If you're lucky, you have friends in your local area who can help you. If you're lucky, you might even have a friend who can fly out to help you. Or sometimes you've got it all established. You're actually doing fairly well. You did hire a nurse to come help you. And then your mom gets offended because you didn't call her to come help you. Or maybe your best friend gets offended because you didn't call them to come help you with your broken leg. It's really up to you to put down your boundaries and to make it clear what kind of a friend you are available to be. And then in turn, 
think about those people when you're seeking friendships with them. What are you, what's the message you're sending to them? What is the reasoning you're giving them to form this intimate relationship that could lead to an obligation um, that you're maybe not ready to take on? Think about it in terms of like my wedding's coming up and I know a lot of people were kind of upset in some ways that that I couldn't have like a very specific type of wedding. Even some of my commenters, some of the people were kind of shocked, but my partner and I are honestly having the wedding we want. We're having a ceremony that's about us that isn't going to be overwhelming or anxiety inducing for us. We're going to have the ceremony we want. And yes, it is not the ceremony that I thought I would have as a child, but it is the ceremony I'd like in my 30s. But I still find people being sort of like, yeah, but then you can't invite your friends and you can't invite your family. But if you're my friends and my family, then you should just want me to have the celebration I want. And right now, this is the celebration I want. But sometimes even your inner circle, even the people closest to you won't understand why, right? Funny enough, my parents have come around pretty significantly recently. They're very supportive of this marriage in a way they weren't in the beginning. And I think it's because they're just happy to see me with someone who makes me so happy. And I think that's good enough. 15-year-old Brittany might have wanted them at my wedding, but 33-year-old Brittany is actually super grateful that I get to wear the dress I want and have the boobage I want and actually get to have the wedding I want now because, yeah, my parents are so religious that they would expect me to cover up at my wedding, so I'm decent. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's actually a win-win. Sometimes in life, we think friendship as a win-win looks like radical acceptance past or, 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 or moving into validation. So radical acceptance to me is not validation. Radical acceptance is saying, I see that you're doing things that I'm not a fan of, but as your friend, I radically accept that this is your journey and I am here when you are going through it or and or after, you know, because you have boundaries. I think validation is when you think you have friends so they can approve of your reality and that they can tell you you're doing great. Now, here's the thing. Your friends can live different realities than you and are doing great, but that doesn't quite mean that you're validating them. I think Farm Brother is having a great fucking life right now. It's so wonderful, him and his wife and his four kids and everyone's so happy. But do I need to validate his religious lifestyle that's also anti-LGBT? No, but I can say he's doing a really good job within his bubble and within his reality. I don't think he's doing poorly. I think he's doing well. Because if I was in that bubble and that was the rules of that bubble, that would be a success, right? But if he's in the rules of my bubble, he's still successful and doing okay. But man, it's going to be really difficult when his kids come out as gay, if they do. And he has to deal with sort of like, oof, that's, you know, he's going to love his kids, but is he going to allow their same-sex partners to come over for a barbecue? Probably not. Again, radically accepting that your children are going on a journey, your friends are going on a journey, your spouses are going on a journey, it's not the same thing as validating. So when you're seeking out friendship, you have to decide, do I need friends because I need to be validated? Do I need friends because I want to share something that we have in common? Do I need friends because I'm lonely and I'll take anything? All of these answers could be the right answers. As long as the why is somewhat wholesome and I think loving. Lacking of maliciousness fixes 99% of problems in the world or lacking in malicious selfishness. So sometimes in life, I always, or sometimes in my videos, I mean, I'll say things like, I'm a very selfish person. And some people are like, no, you're not. No, you're not. I am selfish, which means I am self-focused. I focus on Brittany and Brittany's needs first and foremost. And then I consider the people around me and I just happen to have enough spoons to look like I am always helping people. But what I'm doing is actually within my boundaries, operating within my values. And since my values believe in helping people, it's not that hard for me to just look like someone who's helping people because it's within my values and my spoons. If someone came to me, though, and I was completely out of energy and I just absolutely couldn't do, like I couldn't help them without sacrificing my well-being in a real way, I probably couldn't be there for you. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's something to be said about the why of friendship, especially when I talk to Abba or Steven or anyone else and we have these these conversations about what is loneliness, what is friendship, what is the point? When Steven goes on stream and says, like, Brittany's a close friend, I would trust her. That's really interesting because for me, like, gosh, Steven, I don't think could answer any personal questions about me. But are we not friends? No, I think we're friends. We're absolutely friends. I really like Steven. But Stephen's not my inner circle. I don't know much about Stephen. I can't vouch for Stephen in a lot of ways, but I can vouch with certain specific 
parts of Steven that I've been able to see because we're friends. Like, does that make sense? I want to very much be clear that how he might describe our friendship might not coincide with how I see it. So again, we need to have reality checks in our friendships, right? I meet people all the time who are like, Brittany, you're like an older sister to me. I love you so much. You're such an important person to me. And I don't know anything about them really. I just gave them advice one time and we became friends or maybe they're like, you know what I mean? Like people in my real life, content creators, my own, my own cousins. Some people will be like, you are so important to me. I, I just love you so much, but they don't know anything about me. They just know that I help them. That is like the the disconnect that I'm seeing in the world where people are like, yeah, I'm just, you know, I hang out with them every week. They mean so much to me. But do you ever ask about them, really get to know them? Are they just a placeholder so you have something to do on a Saturday night? Again, casual, shallow relationships I think are really, really beneficial. Like I said, if the bowling alley here didn't shut down because of COVID, I would be at that bowling alley every week. I would be in a bowling league and I would have bowling friends. Do I have bowling friends right now? No. Would they be deep relationships? No, they'd be casual and fun friendships. And I wish I could have them right now because that would be so fulfilling. But I'm three hours from the nearest bowling alley. So we're not going to do that. When I move to Europe, though, I wonder if there's going to be a bowling alley in town. The point is, is that I know why I want casual relationships. I also know why I think things are important in what way, right? I think my relationship with my inner outer friends Some of them are so important. Like my Seattle friends that I've known for six plus years, our friendships are so important to me and I really hope we maintain them for a very long time. I don't want to feel or any pressure to uh, like or any obligation to necessarily make it go forever, but I'd really like us to stay in contact for as long as it makes sense for our lives. My inner circle though, like unless I am somehow abusing somebody or our relationship becomes so toxic we can't hang out. I don't know why anyone in my inner circle and I would never, would ever stop talking, right? So even though I have very close friends, again, friends that I think are so amazing, I could see them needing to go in a direction in their life where maybe our friendship isn't benefiting them to the fullest degree. Maybe they just have more people. Maybe they're poly and have multiple partners. And then maybe they have kids. Maybe they just get overwhelmed with life and they have to really put me on the back burner. I could 100% be okay with that. But if my sister... If Q, if my bestie of 20 something years, if my engineer friend, if any of them came to me and was like, I'd like to go in a different direction, I'd be like, pourquoi? Like, what is happening here? What, what is this? You, what is this? Because that would be so weird since I think all of us value our friendships to such a degree that not being friends, I think would be just as shocking to them. Like my best friend of 20 plus years always tells me, you're the only friend I have, Brittany, that always makes it clear you really want to be in my life. Like you actively make it clear you love me. And I was like, absolutely. freaking lutely As somebody who has a lot of friends, I think it's really important, like dating, to sort of reassure your friends that you really, really love them and want you want them in your life. Now, my bestie and I, we talk mostly on Marco Polo right now because our jobs are so busy. We don't have a lot of time to like catch up. So we Marco Polo, we check in on text messages and that's really good. We've been friends for over 20 years. We are not worried about making sure we talk on the phone, right? Like that is not a priority for us. The point is, is that we have known each other for so long. There is no doubt we will be friends forever. But again, we are are kind of making that decision together. So in some ways we are doing life together. It's just on a spectrum. It's on a it's on a it's on a wavelength. It's on an understanding. So when I hear people say I'm lonely, I don't have friends, what I'm hearing you say is I don't feel seen. I don't feel loved. I feel like I'm lonely. But again, are you the kind of person and this is your chore. This is your homework assignment today. You need to put yourself in a category. Are you the kind of person that even when you're in a relationship, you still need to hang out with your friends frequently? Are you the kind of person that once you're in a relationship, you're actually pretty good and you don't need to see your friends that frequently? Are you the kind of person that wants your partner and your friends to see each other frequently, like brunch every weekend? Are you the kind of person that doesn't need your partner to join them, but you want to see your friends every week? Are you the kind of person that, do you get what I'm saying? You have to know who you are. So you know why you want friends. This idea that somehow our friends are going to be the reason we figure it out 
is somewhat true, but also false. Yes, we need to date people to know how to be better partners, but we also need to break up with people to know what we want in relationships. Same with friendships. Yes, we need to have friends who help us be who we are. I know a category of person who likes to go and make friends and then drop their friends once they've learned the lesson. And I think that's sort of malicious. So again, it's selfish malicious. I'm going to go on OkCupid under friendship, make friends with people to learn something about myself. And then once I've learned it, thank you for the friendship. I think that's sort of malicious selfishness, unless it's been pre-negotiated as, hey, do you want to hang out with each other and like hang out, live out a moment and then go our own ways? Perfect. But since most of us are lonely and seeking out friendship, it'd be quite cruel, I think, to engage in something that looks like good friendship, knowing you're going to break it off eventually once you get what you want. So again, being selfish enough to seek out friendships and talk to people and hope that it becomes something different is not the same as maliciously creating a friendship cycle that you know you're just going to spit your friends out one by one unless they know ahead of time. Because there is also a category of person that likes to ghost people, likes to live out the moment, likes to be sort of casual, go with the flow, spontaneous. Everyone is having a different relationship with the why of friendship. So I really need you to be very clear about how you're going to categorize yourself. And if you don't know yet, as you're building those friendships and those relationships to figure it out, just be conscientious of those people and know they're real people with real feelings. Now, through this process, you are going to meet horrible people. You're going to have horrible relationships with people. And those are also going to be tools that the universe is giving you to sort of understand yourself. So don't worry too much when it's happening, but take a deep breath and get ready to really fight the battle of why would my friend do this to me? Because it happens. If you're a person who's open and vulnerable and you're seeking out intimacy with people in a way in which when they get to know you, they could hurt you, you are running that risk. You know how in the red pill kind of bubbles or not red pill necessarily, but certain adjacent bubbles, there's this whole anti-marriage sentiment of like don't get married women will take 50% of your income you could also say don't make friends they're going to take 50% of your vulnerabilities and expose it on twitter right everything is comes at a risk everything good takes suffering takes a risk takes discipline and friendship is a discipline right sometimes I'll have like arguments with my inner circle and I'm like okay like I'm just clarifying that this is like not the end of our friendship just because we're having a moment. And they're like, of course not. And I'm like, I'm just checking out loud because bros, it's tense up in here. And sometimes that happens. I remember during COVID, my besties were really going through it. And I had to tell like two of them, I love you. You need to go see somebody like a therapist. This is beyond me. I can't help you through this. This is mental health, right? I am not a therapist. I am your friend. Same thing like, um, when like people have bad things happen, sometimes I can't always be there, but I try my best to make it clear why. So my friends don't feel abandoned, but they have to know I have to have boundaries, right? My my inner circle, I think, wouldn't ask something of me in a malicious way that they knew would violate my boundaries. But I think sometimes it is sort of a shock to have your inner circle come to you and say, hey, I really need your help. And for you to say, I can't be the one to help you because there's this illusion. And this is the other half of it that I think everyone gets wrong. There's this illusion that everyone is the same category of inner circle, but inner circle is specific. Do you guys watch Sons of Anarchy? I loved that show when it came out. I binged it. I got to it late. So I got to binge like all the seasons basically. And when I was watching it, there is a sentiment of inner circle and sons of anarchy. But that is a type of inner circle I can't actually vibe with. If you murder someone and you need me to bury a body for you, you had best have a good reason I'm facing federal prison. Because 99.9% of the time, I'm not doing that. And I'm definitely going to call you into the cops. Not because I hate you, but because I don't know why anyone in my inner circle would ever have to murder someone. Why? Why, 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 why? But could there be exceptions? Sure. In the one in a billion situation, I could think of a circumstance in which maybe somebody would have to kill someone in self-defense or something like that. But in Sons of Anarchy, because it's a gang show about motorcyclists, um, ma'am, they're killing people left and right. Ma'am, they are selling drugs left and right. They are selling guns left and right. The amount of obligation that inner circle is asking of you is too much. I ain't going to federal prison for nobody. And at the same time, in my fantasy land, I kind of am going to federal prison for the loved ones. But am I? 
Do I really want to have friends that are going to put me in a situation to face federal prison? No. So when I pick and choose my inner circle, I'm really choosing people that, you know, break normal people laws, like speeding too fast or going too slow. I'm hopefully picking people that maybe are like potheads or something, or maybe do DMT or acid. Like I'm not choosing friends that are going to put me in a position to, for the stupidest, dumbest reasons, have to face federal prison. So again, when you're making investments in your inner circle, you're asking what kind of lifestyle do you want? I want a lifestyle that makes it clear. I love my inner circle. I will visit you in prison. But if you put my life online, like because you committed a crime I would never commit and you expect me to take the fall for you. What is this? A fucking Netflix show? No. But some people have that narrative in their head. You're my inner circle. You should want to do this. Look, some people's inner circles, if they asked you like for $2,000, you would just give it to them. But in my inner circle, not necessarily. I have certain siblings I ain't given no money to because they're really bad with money. Even if they needed it, I'd be like, sorry, sir, you're going to learn what homelessness is like for six months. Why should a person who comes from my background, privileged enough, lower middle class, but privileged enough to have resources, privileged enough to have resources into education, though they'd have to get out loans. It's not like we have money, but we have the education to know how to avoid very bad situations. So if you're a kind of sibling or or inner circle that has just proven time and time again you're really bad with money, for my own sanity, I'm not going to give you any money, my friends. I'm sorry. You're going to have to learn the lesson the universe is trying to give you, which is if you're not good with your money and you take advantage of people, you do deserve to face those consequences eventually. So for me, I'll give you a chance. I'll give you money like three times. But if by the third time you legit aren't good with it still, Habibi, welcome to homelessness. This is your new path. And that's the harshness that some people don't expect from me when I say inner circle. And that's why you need to categorize yourself. Are you the kind of person that you are the inner circle person that gives money to people even when they're bad with it? Or are you the inner circle person that says, tough love, you're going to have to learn this lesson now? Learn what category you are so you understand what the expectations are when you hear these words. Inner circle friends. What are friends? Oh my God, I struggled with this so much the last few years because so many of my callers would be like, hey, do you want to be friends after? And the thing is, yeah, sometimes the consciousness that is that caller makes me want to have coffee with them. But the time that I'm allowed, the realistic nature of our connection, it's not really meant to be. But sometimes it's meant to be casual. So I have this fantasy life where I've seen adults do it and I really like it, where adults can get together every week and do like a book club and still not parasocial relationship, even our own friendships, like move too much into that inappropriate. I know you. I'm making something of this. When I was younger and I had that first adult group out of high school, it was over politics. We all met at a coffee shop called Bassam's in San Diego in Hillcrest area by Balboa Park. It was it's an amazing coffee shop. It's one of my favorite places. And in this coffee shop, we met and we formed a friend group. Like first night, we were like, holy shit, are we about to be friends? And then for like a few years, we were with each other every weekend. I lived in Riverside and I would drive my ass to San Diego every weekend, party all weekend with these friends, talk about politics, yell at each other, do radio promos, do all these like have all these dreams about being president. There was a guy in our group that never took group photos with us because he was going to run for office in the future. And he didn't want any any pictures. You feel me? So um, we, after a few years, uh, started to disintegrate the relationship group, the friendship group, started to just, we all moved into our own bubbles. And so for me and my bestie, the engineer, she and I moved away and we did our own thing. And then for some of the people, some of the people got married, some of the people moved on, some of the, we just, we ended. And yes, in some ways we were shocked because we thought maybe this was our forever friend group. But it was clear it wasn't. But man, was it good when it lasted and was it bad when I got messy? But that was such a good, important lesson for me to learn in terms of friendship, that the people you meet and you vibe with could be casual, people you meet on occasion, maybe never even get close to, but have really profound conversations with, or sometimes you try to be more intimate and it just kind of blows up. This is the lesson of life. This is the suffering part of life. You say you want friendship. You say you want relationships. You say you want to be someone trustworthy to people. But what are you asking people to be to be to you? What are you asking people to do for you? I think it's just so important. And then get ready for betrayals. Get ready for a Lion King type betrayal because it happens. Sometimes you in good conscience make friendships with people that aren't good for you. 
I've done it so many times at this point, I fully just expect it sometimes. But that's why I already have an inner circle that's closed. And that's why when I talk to people, I'm actively saying, like, unless you're really meant to be in it and you're going to defy even my spoon level, it's not happening. Sometimes I get people who say things like, oh, Brittany, if you had more um, energy, we would have been inner circle. But the truth is, I think if you were meant to be my next inner circle person, you would just be. But I think right now I'm probably capped for the rest of my life, but I'm open to the idea that somebody could come along at a time when I have more energy and they could be inner circle, but it's not the energy that's missing to be inner circle. It's actually the seeing. It's that desire I have to want to know you more clearly outside of a friendship. So again, that inner outer circle, it's like friendships I have that I would make an effort for, but I don't want to make the actual effort to be inner circle. You know what I'm saying? And even my inner circle, sometimes I'll have people, siblings, friends, whatever, who will say things like, uh, like my sister and I do this constantly, where we're like, okay, we're mishearing each other. We're miscommunicating. How can we see each other better? But no matter how hard we work, we just can't. So we have to live and let live because it's not going to happen. We're too different and unique as a consciousness to really get each other in the way that you think would be obvious. Sometimes I think that's why people misunderstand when I say being seen, I mean being seen. And I don't mean you have to work so much to be seen. Look, my family and I could see each other plenty in many ways. We had to work to see each other better, but it wasn't without being seen in an aggressively obvious way. With my inner circle, people that I've I've brought in who are not related to me, they do see me very strongly, very safely. But whether or not they could, let's say my friend who's the engineer sees me, she sees me like 60, 80%, 65, 80, between 65 and like 80, 78% realistically, uh, in a very specific way, I would say, I would say. And I think everyone in my inner circle sees me about that much, but, but these are friendships, right? So I would say everyone sees me, uh, between 60 and probably 80%, but the remaining things they can't see is enough to like, have to live and let live. If it was a relationship like a romantic one, I'd want to make the effort to gap the the emptiness. But as friendships, I don't really see a need for it. But some people might want it. I'm just not that kind of personality. So again, I'm the one who has to say I'm open, but I have boundaries. I love you as a friend. I actually don't want to get to know you more because I don't need to know this part of you to enjoy the parts we have. But maybe my friend, maybe my sister might say, well, don't you think our friendship would be better? Well, not really. I don't think so. And I've proven time and time again, for me, it doesn't. So the relationship I have with my sister now is the strongest and healthiest it's ever been because we let go of that narrative that we had to see each other 100%. We we just didn't see it as important because it, it felt like violating to me. I don't want to be that intimate with my friends. I don't want my friends to see me 100%. Because again, for Brittany to see me 100%, you'd have to see me as a lover. You'd have to see me in an intimate situation that frankly, no thank you. You feel? No thank you. Now, that doesn't mean sex. I think a lot of people hear me say this and they hear sex. But when I say intimate, I mean intimate. I mean about my feelings, my fears, my insecurities. You could tell your bestie, yeah, girl, oh my God, like I was assaulted. And that's one conversation level you could have with your besties. But then when I tell my partner that story, when he hears it, he's not hearing it as a friend. You know what I'm saying? The intimacy level is different. And so when you're seeking out friendships, Be aware of what intimacy level you want with someone because I get a lot of people who tell me a lot of intimate things about themselves who even strangers, even when I was a teenager, people would just be like, Brittany, can I talk to you? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And then they would just tell me these things and they'd be like, Brittany, you're the first person I've told this to that didn't look at me like I was a monster. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, you must really see me. And I'm like, oh, I suppose. And then they're like, you, you and I must be like, does this mean we're going to be friends? And I'm like, oh, no, no. So remember, when you give your heart to someone, when you pour your heart to someone and you think like, oh, they're really here for me. We even had a crying moment together. This must be a strong friendship. One of the crazy nuances of friendship, our connection, our intimacy is that you could actually be in a position where you are having a very intimate moment in time and it's just in this moment that you're actually not meant to be together. You're not meant to be friends. You ever hear those movies where it's like, I got such butterflies. We had the greatest one night stand of our life. Is this my husband? Probably not. 
Same thing with friendships. We had the most amazing conversation. We met at a bar. We just started talking over beers. Bro, is this my next best friend? Maybe, but probably not. I think we should be grateful for exactly what occurs through a friendship, through a relationship. This is something I learned over the last few years. For me, I'm just grateful for whatever we have. What do we have? What can we have, right? Some of my friends know I am not available to you, but you can book a call because girl, God bless you. I'm going to choose work because unless you're inner circle and even then I'm probably going to choose to work. I like working. It gives me so much fulfillment to ask me to spend my time in my life not working is sort of strange. And at the same time, I will ditch work to be with my family when I'm in that space. Absolutely. I will absolutely give up money to be with my family. 100%. It's just not always in everyone's perfect timing. Which is why, again, it comes back to you. What is your timing? Who are you and why do you want friendship? And how do you communicate that to your loved ones? There's so much more to say on friendship. That's where I'm going to leave it for now. I look forward to hearing your comments or reading your comments in the sections down below. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. In my head, in my life, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Da 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 da